Welcome back, everyone, to the American Dairy Science Association taking place here in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. We're here and interviewing today uh, Usman Arshad. Uh, Usman, we met yesterday, uh, saw your presentation. You're a very accomplished young man, very impressive. Um, I understand you just got done completing your oral presentation here at the ADSA. How'd that go? It went very well, actually, yeah. because people recognized that this was the novel work, which has been done first time to show that how choline can uh, uh, alleviate the risk of fatty liver and dairy cows. So I was excited, a lot excited. Yeah. So it went very well. Yeah, very good. So the, the title of your presentation was Rumen Protected Choline Reduces Hepatic Triglycerol uh, Content by Increasing Hepatic Triglyceride Rich Lipoprotein Secretion. So how'd you come up with the idea for this research? Was this your idea or uh, Dr. Santos? Well, uh, back in 90s and early 2000, uh, Dr. Grummer and other colleagues, they uh, proposed a hypothesis that uh, rumen protected choline uh, might be enhancing the export of triacylglycerol from the hepatic tissue. So that's how choline can uh, reduce the risk of fatty liver in cows. But no one has actually proved this concept so uh, we knew uh, what's going on, but we just needed to prove this. So in this particular experiment, we actually proved this concept. Okay, in just general terms, how would you explain the, the, the protocol? How'd you go about proving this? So, well, uh, we all know that it's uh, pretty much well known now, okay, like choline, it enhances the synthesis of phosphatidylcholine, which is a major phospholipid. So we thought probably choline, if enhanced the, uh, phospholipids part, it can enhance the VLDL particles, like lipoprotein particles. And the good thing of very low density lipoprotein particle is it packages triacylglycerol into its core component. So you can say easily that 50 to 60% of the composition of that lipoprotein particle is mainly composed of triacylglycerol. Now, if choline can enhance the synthesis of this lipoprotein particle, and we know that this particle contains majority of triacylglycerol. So the triacylglycerol, which is deposited in the hepatic tissue, it can be packaged inside that particle, which can come out of the hepatic tissue. So that's how you can reduce the deposition of triacylglycerol in the hepatic tissue and ex export it out the blood. Oh, very so. interesting. My co-host joining me today is Dr. Ryan Ordway. Uh, Ryan, tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you do for oh. Balcam? Thanks, Scott. I appreciate you having me here as part of the podcast. This is your first time, so my, hopefully not your last. My first podcast ever. So, yes. yeah. Um, I've been with uh, Balcam uh, for 13 years and held various roles within the company. Uh, technical, started in technical, and now I'm the global director of strategic accounts. And so do a lot with uh, research, product development. Um, Very well. Business side of things anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to have you here. Um, so I'll just hand it off to you if you got any questions yeah. for this mine. I do. So this is uh, this is really interesting research um, that you've been doing. And I think, you know, for uh, I, I hate to say I've been in the, in the industry now for a while, but I've been in the industry for a while. And, you know, this is a, this research is really an evolution, I think, from my standpoint of, you know, where we've been, where sort of feed them, weigh them type research where we just, you know, feed something like choline look for a response you know okay. usually in feed intake or milk production or whatever and um you know now we're actually with the technology we have looking at expression of genes and it's you know mm -hmm. sort of to me the next generation of research next generation of science and unlocking what what is going on um actually within the animal you know biologically not just what we see on the outside being body condition score or or uh, production or whatever. So tell me a little bit about, you know, sort of the genesis behind looking at genes and, and you, you know, saw all kinds of different expression of, of the of genes with, you know, in response to feeding choline. Anything that really stood out to you and uh, any key findings um, that, that the audience would be interested in learning? Yeah. So uh, I think I guess uh, mRNA expression, or in other words, gene expression, it tells you a snapshot what's actually going on at the cell level. Like as you said, we can see if the cow is producing more milk or not, if she's losing weight or not, or if she's gaining weight by 
comparing body condition score or by comparing milk yield of two cows, that's pretty much evident. But what's actually happening inside the tissue and inside the cell? So this, when you do the mRNA expression, it gives you the uh, ideas that how your treatment is affecting at a cellular level, which is a very small, less unit in the body. So, well, in our experiment, when we supplemented choline, so we had a lot of genes which were upregulated, meaning the message to synthesize proteins for some particular uh, molecules was, 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 was a lot. So, for example, so like I said before, if you want to reduce the risk of fatty liver, which is certainly not good for the health of cows and productivity of the cows. If you want to reduce the risk of that fatty liver, you have to remove that fat out of the liver. And one way to do that is to export that fat out of the liver. How you can do that to enhance the synthesis of lipoproteins. Now, there is a procedure in the body to synthesize that lipoprotein, which is not a single step process. It involves three or four steps. You need to have enough phospholipids there enough proteins there and triacylglycerol. Now, if you feed choline, the message went to the cells that's, that led to synthesis more of those proteins which were able to package that triacylglycerol into the uh, VLDL particle. And one of the genes is MTTP, microsomal tri transfer triglyceride protein. So what this protein does, it actually takes the triacylglycerol, which is accumulated in the hepatic tissue and which is not good to stay there. So it's gonna take that with, with itself and it's gonna package to lipoprotein and it's gonna keep doing that. And the other genes like ApoB48, it's a protein which is required for the assembly of that VLDL particle. So the more expression of these genes would be there, there would be more protein synthesis that's gonna increase the synthesis and assembly of those lipoproteins which are going to export this triacylglycerol out of the hepatic tissue. So that's how choline can enhance the, uh, uh, sorry, choline can reduce the incidence of fatty liver in cows. It's pretty interesting. Scott, this is my uh, bus discussion. So Usman was able to demonstrate we were able to make more choline buses. Yeah, to, uh... yeah this goes back to a PowerPoint presentation, Ryan, it showed me the other day. and. Uh... It was kind of like uh, choline for dummies. That's what yeah. he was using the bus concept because he was talking to me about that. Anyway, sorry about that. Right? Yeah. So one of the, I, I think, interesting concepts behind this type of research is it not only is showing the effects of choline, but I think gives us the opportunity to look at how choline is interacting with other nutrients as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you elaborate a little bit on on what this is unlocking in terms of from a science standpoint uh how we can see it uh more as a holistic approach yes yeah, so <clears throat> choline basically it's a methyl donor right and there are also other methyl donors which are available uh such as methionine human protected methionine or betaine and uh, we have seen in the literature that uh, choline truly acts as a lipotropic agent let me give you an example so so far if I remember correctly, there are six or seven trials where people were trying to see if whether rumen protected methionine can reduce the risk of fatty liver. And well, they were unable to detect the effect. So it means that uh, rumen protected choline, uh, sorry, rumen protected methionine, it might have effect on the production components. It can enhance the milk protein synthesis or milk production. But for the hepatic tissue, Choline should be fed to the cows. Like in our experiment, we maintained uh, uh, the required amount of metabolizable methionine so that we can isolate the effect of choline. So all the cows had same level of methionine, but the cows who were supplemented with choline, they had less infiltration of triacylglycerol in the hepatic tissue. So this means that choline is a is a lipotropic agent and it should also be fed along with other methyl donors such as rumen protected methionine. It's so really looking, uh, basically saying the biology is working in concert uh, with other other compounds, not yes. not one one nutrient or bioactive working by itself and doing its own thing, but everything impacting uh, as a whole. Exactly, because uh, uh, choline, methionine, betaine, they all participate in one carbon metabolism. So choline can be transferred to methionine and methionine can, can play its roles on the production components. Uh, but for the hepatic tissue, uh, 
I think all in is more necessary in terms of uh, uh, balance feeding rations. Yeah, Usman, as we kind of kind of wrap things up here, can you kind of put a bow on the conversation and what are some of the key uh, one or two takeaways for the audience today from this uh, research? So, well, uh, uh, I have been in research from last four years, so it's not only one experiment. We also conducted a meta-analysis where we uh, included all the studies which have been done from in last 20 years to see what choline does to the uh, productive performance and the health of cows. And interestingly, uh, uh, if you supplement 12.9 grams of choline ion during transition period, it enhanced milk production almost two kilograms per day and uh, concurrent with the reduced health events such as mastitis or retained placenta. And uh, now with this experiment where we actually induced fatty liver in cows and then we supplemented them with uh, choline, so we were able to detect lower incidence of fatty liver. So if you have less fatty liver, the cows would be in greater health, they would be producing more milk, and that would be beneficial for the uh, economics of the dairy herd. Okay, now I understand your uh, collegiate career is coming to an end. You're uh, graduating soon and uh, we'll be going back home to Pakistan. So what research is left to be done and who's gonna carry on that research uh, in your absence? Well, uh, I would say a lot of things that could be done with, uh, with, with this research. So for example, the, the findings of our experiment, they suggest that choline enhances the uh, lipoprotein synthesis, but we do not know if there was more lipoprotein particles or if the size of the lipoprotein particle was more. In other way, if the choline supplemented cows were able to package more triglyceride in one lipoprotein particle or if the particle size itself was bigger enough to have more triglyceride. So that could be one of the component that could be looked into that. And another one, a finding which comes into a meta-analysis, the availability of literature on the effects of choline on reproduction. We have seen a plenty of literature suggesting that choline enhances the embryo development, it can enhance the fertility, but really there are not very much experiments available where we can enroll, let's say, 500 cows, 700 cows, one group receives choline, one group receives no treatment, and then we can see if it can enhance the fertility of the cows or not. So if we can hit that area as well, it would be good for the farmers and producers as well. All right. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon here at the ADSA and uh, look forward to uh, staying in touch with you down the road. Well, thank you. We'd love to hear your comments or ideas for topics and guests. So please reach out via email to anh.marketing at balchem.com with any suggestions and we'll work hard to add them to the schedule. Don't forget to leave a five star rating on your way out. You can request your Real Science Exchange t-shirt in just a few easy steps. Just like or subscribe to the Real Science Exchange and send us a screenshot along with your address and t-shirt size to anh.marketing at balchem.com. Balchem's Real Science Lecture Series of webinars continues with ruminant-focused topics on the first Tuesday of every month, monogastric-focused topics on the second Tuesday of each month, and quarterly topics for the companion animal segment. Visit balchem.com slash real science to see the latest schedule and to register for upcoming webinars.